Let's get serious now. Let's turn to the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 6. Malachi, this is probably the last verse of the Old Testament. This is how it goes. His preaching will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, or the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. Now, this is, as you know, this is a, a prophecy, prophecy partially fulfilled, or this is a prophecy regarding John the Baptist. So after the intertestamental period, he will come in the spirit of Elijah, and his preaching will bring the hearts of the fathers and the son. So that's the kind of, just an idea about it. So I, I want to talk to you something about uh, the whole idea of fathers are, you are called to reflect the heavenly father. Okay? Called to reflect the heavenly father. So, Sorgia Pidavine Pradibimbi Kanaita Vlikke Patta Pidakan Mare. So, first one is fathers uh, with a small letter F, fathers, as we talk about it. The other one is the father. We are talking about the heavenly father. Our job, we are called to reflect the heavenly father. You know, um, we actually live in a time where there's crisis everywhere. Okay, a little bit of a crisis in the country, crisis in, in, uh, in, in, in political realms, crisis everywhere. A little bit of a question. Those of you tired of watching English news, you decide to switch on to Malayalam news, is all crisis. Our Karta Vecha Prashnam. Is all everywhere. There's a problem, you know, everywhere. We've got problems everywhere. They're burning uh, the trains and so many things because of the decision Indian government made about the army recruitment. So there's crisis everywhere. But I want to talk about or just bring the attention um, to the crisis in the family. In a country like U.S., this, it is a big issue today. There's no leadership. There's leadership crisis in this land. Okay? And if you want to see a healing in the country to take place, it should begin in the house. Okay? Healing should start in the house. That will reflect the healing in the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, for a home to stay intact, healthy, God-centered, the man God uses, or we call the father, should demonstrate integrity of character as a father and a husband. It's, very, it's a challenge. It's a call to men, to fathers. We need to, we need to be people of character. People of integrity. They are not like Vilikia, either was singly, Purishan Mari Vilikia. You know, um, there was a Christian family. This is just an illustration. A God fearing family had a, a son who was rebelling against the parents. And he failed the 10th grade which was actually the beginning of several years of deep hurt, brokenness, and sorrow for the parents. So it started from there. Life has been very miserable for these parents. So they sought counseling. But the family still decided to 
persevere with their son endakke undayalum ivante koodathu njangal ingode munbotu poguga enna oru theermanichu and some of their best friends well meaning christians they told this couple all right tell your son if you're not willing to abide by the rules of this house you leave like everyone told him mariyadakku njangal parayina kettu ivada ninnillengil njangalukku pogam leave the house see god told this couple avarodu deiva samsarichu i had rules in my house too listen very carefully i had rules in my house too how many times did you break my rules and sin against me yetra avasham njan vacha nayam nee lankichu ennodu nee paavam cheyidu i never kicked you out of my home every time you sinned i forgave you when you asked me something to remember yetra pravashyam langichu etra pravashyam ene vedanipichu shora pravashyam nee sorry paranju varumbol njan ninnodu shemichu i never kicked you out of my house god told them to love their son in exactly the same way he loved them we are called to reflect the heavenly father hallelujah namada pidavine pradibimbikkan devam vilicharikya i don't have the whole outline out there probably you know this this would be i won't be able to finish uh, this thing this is probably will be another many series that i'll be doing maybe later once i finish with the david so you won't you're not expecting to give a complete message today but i want to challenge you on this day so this was something that that that, that god really challenges family and the father often goes to the lord saying he didn't deserve such a pain and hurt thavai nan idu why lord i have to go through this pain and hurt and the god would remind him of his own sins ayada jeevathile korulla devam kaanichu kodukkum the parents were not content to let the world tell them how to raise their son they continued to seek the lord pray for their son and act toward him as they felt christ would christu engane edavaduvo adu pole edavaduvan avaru theermanichu father learned how to love his son as god would and the story goes on to say that the son later graduated from high he, t- he failed flunk the 10th grade he went on to finish his high school went to university went to seminary he became a preacher praise god see how we respond will make a big impact in their life hallelujah praise god you know uh when god gives us children he has eternity in mind deiva namakku makkale nalgumbol nithyada deivathinte manasilundu and i won't tell you fathers but i don't stand here just declaring to you i'm probably the best father no i'm not i failed at least in some areas i have failed maybe succeeded in some areas we all have failed but i tell you something god has given us children to impact their eternity and the raavu irikkana pidakkanmarod because it's fathers day i want to just tell the fathers here you know devam nammale vilichirikkunnathu nammada makkalude nithyade impact cheyana but this also includes the mothers for sure okay so god wants to walk through you as a father to affect the eternity of your children nammale kuda nammalode devu edavadum god sometimes works through our children to deal with us nammada kunjungale kuda devu nammalode edavadum amen 
So what you do to train, educate, model, your, model for your children will impact generations. So what are you doing? What are we doing? What am I doing to train my children, to educate my children, to model before them a Christian life will impact their life for eternity. Hallelujah. Now this is very important. That, that verse that we read in, in Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. Before we apply that verse to, our, you know, uh, to, to the heavenly father, we need to apply to our human relationship. We must each ask ourselves, is my heart turned towards my heavenly father and his son? Is my heart turned towards Jesus and the Heavenly Father? That's a question that we need to be asking. Because we want it to impact the lives of our children. You know, uh, you have heard this very familiar Sunday school story. And I think you heard during Sunday school messages, preachers talk about it. In a Sunday school, there was a you know, Sunday school teacher telling the students that God is like our heavenly, God is like our father. And then one, 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 one boy said, I don't need that God. I don't want that God. If God is like father, I don't need that God. I don't need that God. But later then inquired, he had a very abusive father. And I want to tell you something. How they view God. Because the only father they have seen is you. The only father that my, my children have seen is me. You are the only father that they see. Only mother that they see. And if they get a wrong idea about a father. And you're trying to tell them about a heavenly father. Who is so nice. Welcoming. Embracing. Loving. It takes them time to rethink. Or we call in modern language. It takes time to recalibrate. God, a loving father. Can you end the reference point is always my earthly father? What kind of a picture are we giving about the heavenly father? It's a challenge. I know probably this is not what you wanted to hear this Sunday morning. But what to do? We have these days. So I have to preach on these things. And I'm challenging myself too. And I tell you, nothing is too late. It's not too late. We can still repent and come to God. We still can pray, God, touch my child. Lord, I missed the opportunity, but here I am coming back to you. Hallelujah. What they think about the Heavenly Father. It's very important. It's, it's directly linked to the way you treat them and you act as a father. You know, we all learn. I'm glad that, you know, uh, Sister Stala, she was talking about, she's talked about a good father, Manoah. Why do we have stories in the scriptures of some wrong characters? Or we call them flawed fathers. Tetipoya, a little Walanuoya with Akin Mare, and the Chaditra Mera is the Moron, really. We are a lot of them. Why is all the stories given us? So that we learn lessons from it. Why are we going through the life of David? The anatomy of his failure is not because you want to say, oh, he was a bad guy and we are good. No. We are learning lessons. Even, even this great composer, David, the, the sweet singer, had his own issues. Samuel was a great prophet, but he had a serious parenting problem. 
So many people like that in the scriptures. So I want to talk about uh, one group, and we have time, I'll go on to a couple of others also. I think we'll pick it up another time. One of the, one of the group of people, these are, these, are, these are parents, fathers who causes damage, okay? When I speak about it, probably you will find yourself playing part of it. Okay, number what we call, we will be an amalgamation of different so we all have, I and I, as I was preparing, I was reading this, I see myself in a couple of these categories. All right. group Passive fathers. Okay. Passive fathers. And you would see, this is one of the common types. Okay, this is a common type you would see in the church. This Kriyanaya Pidav. The message he communicates is very clear. What's the message he gives to the children? Listen, passive others. I'll leave them alone. Listen, what's the message you are communicating to your children about Father? God is distant, God is disinterested. And God is unapproachable. See, passivity is actually the general makeup of too many dads and husbands in our culture today. And you think it is cool. It is not cool. Because you are not reflecting the Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father was not passive. God who was actively involved in human history. So what's, what's, what's a picture? What's a, what's a picture they develop about a father? And as you study, there are reasons for this problem. E passive ticket, there are a lot of contributing factors. One, of course, yes, you understand it's the fall of Adam and Eve. Adam Havamaradavicha, the great fall, as we talk about it. The Nella root cause. Part of it, you know, it's 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 the fall of mankind. The second one is actually is the result of feminism. And egalitarianism. It's 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 feminism, the rise of feminism, and then Magariam Samatto Adam and Wari. We live in a time like that. Where fathers are losing their control, fathers are losing their significance. A lot of people are not willing to submit, not willing to listen, not willing to take orders. These are things that happen in our society. One, one of the things that you all will agree, preachers will agree, everyone will agree. Men have an innate desire. This is in general, not 100%, okay? Men have an innate desire to take a back seat spiritually. While women, generally speaking, are more inclined to lead, especially in spiritual matters. What does it really mean is actually, in general, as you watch, in a home, most of the time, who takes spiritual leadership? Come on, don't worry, we'll have lunch here. It's women. I'm sorry to say that. But I know there are some cases, exceptions, that a man takes leadership for spiritual. But most cases, it's the women in the house, especially in spiritual matters, they take leadership. But there are exceptionally great men, fathers also. I thank God for them. So I'm not saying 100% is that way.
That is the truth that I have seen. They are called to be the leaders, the prophets, and the priests are their homes. But if you became passive, you remain passive. This will impact the eternal destiny of your children. So I'm just challenging men here. Fathers here, rise up, step up to the plate. Hallelujah. When I'm challenging you, I'm also challenging myself. One of the, one of the things that you need to understand, part of the failure, I told you all this, or the women's liberation and the fall and all those things are good. But there's something else that I want to talk about here. Men have not got properly connected to the real, authentic, manly man, Jesus. Amen. What do we think about Jesus? Just think about Jesus. Think of, think of connecting with this great person. The real man. The authentic man. Manly man. I assume I eat or footprints but you can only follow the Lord. Jesus came as a good person, a perfect man who lived on this earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. He, some of the, you know, these, some of these things that I share with you is things that come from my readings. So I'm just telling you that there are people who contributed to what I'm sharing with you today. A lot of people think of Jesus as very cool. Oh, Jesus is so cool, man. I don't know what they really mean by that. Everyone was just partying with Jesus, having a good time with Jesus. They like to hang out with Jesus. I like that part of it. But you need to also look at it. On the one side, Jesus was cool. That's true. What they, one of the, one of the uh, complaints against Jesus, he was a friend of sinners and tax collectors. Okay, that's a cool stuff. But on the other side, you also see Jesus crying. He wept at the tomb of Lazarus. Jesus wept. I'm just asking men here. Not when you have heat boils coming on and such. I'm not talking about that kind of cry. But real men cry. People may say no, but your Jesus cried. He was empathetic towards human pain. He knew exactly what he was going to do the next moment. But Jesus cried. He was cool on the one side, but he cried on the other side. Bible also tells in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. You know why? We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He, is, he has been through weakness and testing, experience it all, but all but the sin. Amen. Namakula Mahabudo Hidden, Namada Belahi Nadagali, Sahadava Nanipan, Kariyata Vanella, Paba Murige. The high priest of ours understands our weaknesses for he faced all of the same testings we do. Yet he did not sin. He was in touch with the inner feelings. That's the man. Jesus. It's with him that we need to come in touch with. I assure you, I'm 
So on this Father's Day, I'm encouraging, I'm challenging fathers here, men here, come in touch with Jesus, the real men, the authentic men. At the same time, you would see him going to the temple. John speaks about that. Chapter 2 of the Gospel. What do you know? Yehudan Mala Paseha Samima Agunda, Yeshu Erishilimile Kuboi, Devarethil Kala, Ada Prava. So they are selling all kinds of birds, all kinds of animals there. These are all supposed to be used for the sacrifice. And they will kill it every day, kill Ponwani Paka. They were traders, money changers, Kayaru Undaru. He made a whip. He toppled the tables of the money traders. Take this out from here. And the Pidavan the Aliate Ningala. Want don't make this into a marketplace. Amen. My house shall be called the house of prayer. So look at the different aspects of Jesus. Look at the time when he cries. Look at the time he empathizes with people. Look at the time he has no problem talking to a woman. He spoke to a Samaritan woman. Jesus had so many women traveling with him, taking care of his needs. Look, Jesus, gentle with the children. At the same time, standing up to the Pharisees, calling them, you whitewashed tomb. Seeing him emerging as a champion in the, in the temple, driving all the people out. That's the real man, Jesus. That's the person we need to get connected to. Men need to get connected with that Jesus, the real man, man's man. Hallelujah. Don't be a passive parent. Jesus was not just, he was not a, a person who is restrained. In a sense, Jesus was a free man. You know, why are we so intimidated by some of these things? We are so guarded. We are so narrow. We are just, just very overly laid back, very passive. It is coming into the homes. Fathers are not taking the challenge. Hallelujah. You are called. Fathers are called to be accountable. You would see in Timothy, yes, in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 4 and 5. Number one, the fathers... Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Fathers, pay attention to that. Pirak and Mare. Not addressing the mothers, but to the fathers. Ningala makkale kobi pikyade kartavinde bala sikshailum patyovada shetulum indiyanam. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but by the way you treat them, rather bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Then it speaks about people who come to the church leadership. Timothy speaks of this, and this is how this, this, this applies to both the elders and also. The deacons. This is how it goes. First Timothy 3 4. He must manage his own family well, having children who respect and obey him. For if a man cannot manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? Listen. Shantanum Kalhikatanum Drivyagrahilatanum Sonda Gudumate. Nanai Parikina in Makale, Purna Gavira Thode, Anisarnatil Parikina in Idikram, Sonda Gudumate, Paripan, Ariatwan, the Yuva Sabayanga Varicum. This is a qualification. This is a requirement. 
for people to come into leadership in the church. That means this is something God expects in every godly family. Ella kudumathilum deivedu padishikina karyangala. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, when, when you really think about a good example for a passive father in the Bible, the first name come to your mind is a person by the name Eli. Eli in the world is a person by the name Eli. He is a person by the name personification of the Bible. It is something that we need to study. You need to read those portions. You know, some of these bad dads of the Bible, they have plenty of things to teach us if we are willing to learn lessons. Eli is, is definitely a good example or a bad example. Good example of what we are talking about here. He was a priest and judge of Israel during one of the lowest points in history. So, you can see that there are two other people in the Towards the end of the era of judges. So, Nayadhivan Marade Avasana Samayam. When everyone, this is something said about this particular period of time. When everyone did what was right in the eyes of, in their own eyes. Tangade ishtatthana bodhichadu ola nadanne urigalam. Nobody cared about the word of God. They did, everyone did what they pleased. Anganathe ura samayatthu priest ayadhi the Rubanishan. His life is a great lesson for us because his key failure was relatively obscure sin that runs rampant in the church today. Passive approach of parenting. Sherikim Maria Amanishande Sambo Namada Namada Del Bangar Pudue Lur Vishava. And do a passive parenting. Active parenting Allah. And do a passive parenting. Balan. Not train a pet child in the way he should go, but they have a different slogan. Just leave the kid to go, to grow up the way he wants to grow. I remain passive. That's Eli. That's the spirit of Eli. But don't get the idea that Eli was really a bad person? No. I would never say that. He had good desire for people of Israel. That's what we read in 1 Samuel 1.17. Good desire. He had reverence for God. They were told that he could on that. And a hatred for evil. So these are not good qualities. But his hatred of evil did not produce any active response. At least as far as his sons were concerned. He hated evil. But any application of that in your family? No. But how about your family? How about in the lives of your children? Did you hate the evil in your children? If not, it's passive parenting. In the they were severely at the very issue on the water in the it's lack of discernment. That's exactly. It on the Tirichari and Kariata Uriguru Paragal. And this is not something you see in a modern church today. Even as, ba- as far as during the time of judges, this was still an issue. Parani Matil was an issue. In the Old Testament, this was an issue. So on this day, it's good for us to take. Some lessons from this. See, look at, look at Eli. It's interesting as you read 1 Samuel chapter 1. As you read, 
you understand. He accused a pious woman called Hannah, pouring her heart in the presence of God, <coughs> silently in the tabernacle. She did not make a noise. She was silently moving her lips. And what did he accuse her of? She is drunk. That is the accusation he made. But what is she doing? She is praying. But at the same time, he was blind or he was oblivious to his own sons who were abusing their priestly office by fornicating and stealing sacrifices right under his nose. <coughs> we are quick to find out what is wrong with somebody else's children. But what is what are his sons doing? The women who serve in the tabernacle, they are attacking them, molesting them, stealing the sacrifice and barbecuing. And the Eli has no problem. But he has problem when a woman is in the presence of God with heart filled with sorrow, crying out for the future of this nation, praying a man is needed. This cannot go on. You are drunk. Hallelujah. It's time for hypocrisy to go from our lives. Brothers, sisters, mothers, and the prayer I want to just ask you. It's time that we need to focus on ourselves. Log in your eyes. But you are so keen on taking the speck from somebody's eyes. With this log in your eye, how do you see this little dust? We are very keen on that. Hallelujah. His sons were wicked. And you know that one day eventually he confronted his sons. But it was only after the wicked conduct became common knowledge among the Israelites. It becomes a talk of the town. Eli's kids are so bad. They are doing these things. Is that parenting? I'm just telling you parents here, if you come across a little thing in your child, you know, in a nice way, tell them it's not fitting for a child of God. We all make mistakes. But we need to stand up for what is right. Look here. This has become a talk of the town. Okay? First Samuel 2, 22 to 25. You know why can I? You can follow uh, whatever the versions you have. Now Eli was very old. And he heard that all that his sons were doing to all Israel. And how they lay with women who served at the doorway of the tent of meeting. He said to them, why do you do such things, the evil things that I hear from all these people? No, my sons, for the report is not good, which I hear the Lord's people circulating. Oh, 
ലോഡ്സ് പീപ്പിൾ സർക്കുലേറ്റ് ആളുകളെല്ലാം ഈ പറഞ്ഞുണ്ടാക്കുന്ന നിന്നെക്കുറിച്ച് നിങ്ങളെക്കുറിച്ച് പറഞ്ഞുണ്ടാക്കുന്ന ഈ ദോഷം നല്ലതല്ല മക്കളെ നല്ല റിപ്പോർട്ടല്ല വെരി സാഡ് ഈ വൺ മാൻ സിൻസ് അഗൻസ് അനദർ ഗാഡ് വിൽ മീഡിയേറ്റ് ഫോർ ഹിം ബട്ട് ഇഫ് എ മാൻ സിൻസ് അഗൻസ് ദ ലോഡ് ഹു കൻ ഇൻഡസ്റ്റ് ഫോർ ഹിം but they would not listen to, to the voice of their father for the lord desired to put them to death ho ah avasanate a bhagam you look at the last part of what i read the verse 25 the last part of it the lord desired to put them to death are adutha purohidane you grew up in a father's you know in a priest family you saw god working you saw god moving you touch the spiritual things right from the very beginning now what a sad pathetic verse that concludes that section the lord decided to put them to death the father did not act early pidakan mar samayatha act yedilengil tambura naktiyum i'm just warning my people here i'm just telling god's people here if you don't correct you don't stop you don't intervene you don't fast and pray the lord will put them to death hallelujah adu vena karanjondirikkanadayittu varum ainonnu namakku idayai thirudu kodo let's come to god in repentance say lord here we come lord kartave njangal ivada variga kartave fathers need discernment you can conceal the truth for some time but eventually sin will come out it will bring undeniable consequences nam chey what you sow what you reap seriyallo vedakkane endeyum koyum so one of the issues that you see is his failure to discipline them achadakkathil undaya pilavu that is one of his biggest problem okay so eli may have confronted his sons but he never took any disciplinary action against them maybe he thought his loving attitude towards his sons but scripture says that it was practically you know you it was practical hatred he didn't discipline them he said i didn't like this stuff i hate this stuff but he did not discipline don't they, don't don't tell me it's oh it's a modern parenting pastor you have no go scriptural parenting go scriptural parenting listen to proverbs 13 verse 24 he who withholds his rod hates his son but he who loves him discipline him diligently wise words what do you be oi kattavan thana magane pagekkunu avane snehikkunavano cherupathile avane that's bible that's bible he who withholds his rod hates his son but he loves him he but he who loves him disciplines him diligently cherupathile avane endiyanam well i also tell parents appropriate discipline that's a key word appropriate look at his age weetil irikkunna chapathi roll eduthal adikkundu some people get so mad they they bring that stuff and they tell pan belt no 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 you have to be very careful disciplining is very important we should do that Solomon says in chapter 19 verse 18 Proverbs discipline your son while there is hope and do not desire his death pratyasha ullada thol ninne magane malayalam translation angu suvaidu vannathillathu engilu avane kolluvan thakkavanam discipline your son while there is hope and do not desire his death while there is hope ennu parayna prayogam 
It is actually suggesting there comes a time when it is too late for the disciplinary process to do any good. A time will come when anything you say, he will not listen. It's too late. Do it when you can, when he listens. Children here don't say, I'm an instigator. Getting excited, your parents, so that you get beating tomorrow onwards. All I'm just trying to say is, discipline your son while there is hope. It's your God says, the Holy Spirit is saying this. Discipline them. A time will come. It's hopeless. Just simply pray and fast because you cannot listen. You cannot tell anything. They will not listen to you. You can tell, son, I'm praying for you. Daughter, I'm praying for you. And go to the presence of God and cry out and say, God, touch my child. I know it's too late. I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I gave everything that they asked for. I never disciplined properly. Cry to God. Eli was very old by the time he confronted his sons. He did only because he was hearing reports. Do not desire his death. If you don't want your son to die, who is going to kill him? God. God decide to kill him. Now I can If you don't want God to kill him, then you better start doing something good early. You know, Proverbs has so much things. The rod and the reproof gives wisdom. But a child who sets his own way brings shame to his mother. So the go. What do you mean? Nyanate nalgunu. Nastandishtatani vittirna balano amma kendino. Listen, children, I'll read it one more time. Rod and reproof gives wisdom. Adi wisdom. Adi wisdom. Good word to learn today. Adi wisdom. Wisdom, adi, adi wisdom. It's good. It brings wisdom. Okay? Well, the child has set his own way, brings shame to his mother. Not only mother and father. Get involved. 22 verse 15. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline will remove it far from him. See, by default, even the Hradetod or Sanam Patir Pundadua. Pardon? Foolishness. By default, every child sitting here, you were born as fools. I'm sorry. Eh? <laughs> foolishness. That foolishness is still there. You are brilliant guys, but brilliant fools, that's all. So foolishness is there. When it comes to spiritual matters, it's so close. I think in a The only one thing that will remove, not tea, coffee, bone vita, or any of those Indian drinks will never remove that. Adi is the only thing. Discipline is the only thing that will remove that foolishness from your heart. I like that verse. And you angry star. Pastor Angela is such a mischievous kid. Back in the old days, my, my mother used to tie me to the, 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 to the, to the, to the court. Another court. Football is kind of flat. Back in those it was easy, but I somehow tried to get out of it. But I thank God for those discipline. Adi I received from my mother. She was good. My dad never beat me sitting with them. I think he was a passive man. <laughs> Only one time somebody, you know, instigated him. Don't let him do this thing. I was too big, man. This is so thick. That is the only time my dad beat me. I wish he had done something earlier. My mother did the job for sure, but that was not good enough. It was a little late. But thank God I turned out to be who I am today for the wisdom that I received, okay? 
Praise God. We'll stop right here. And we'll come back to uh, Eli at a later time. Listen to it. So, foolishness. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline will remove it far from him. Eli's, Eli's disapproval of his son's behavior was meaningless because he didn't, you know, he did not back it up with discipline. What disciplines do we bring? Did he remove them from the priestly office? No. He did not. They continued to serve. As we read later, you also understand God is also telling him. Also told him. You know, Bible says he was overweight. And there are there are Bible scholars who link his overweight to what he was eating. What he was eating? Steak. Barbecue, the best part supposed to be given to the Lord. And the sons were very particular, they get one with the fat. Marble portion of the Lord. The best burned and secure Sandoshara. Father also was eating it. So he did not say anything. Doesn't matter what your son or daughter brings to you. Father's Day, don't close your eyes. If you see something ungodly in them, have the right to stand up and say, Son, I don't need that money. Daughter, I don't need that money. Live according to the word of God. That's the guts we need. Have the guts to say, You are walking away from the Lord. You are not walking according to the ways of the Lord. One day God will put him to death. Don't want that to happen. Put her to death. Is it time to discipline? Discipline them. A time will come, you're out of hope. At that time, fall on your knees and cry. And say, God, touch my child. When I stand here and preach, please do not think that I'm a perfect father here. I've never made a mistake. I stand here owning my own mistake. No children now, they are married, they are old. All that I do now is pray in the seat for them. But to parents with smaller children, discipline them appropriately. If you are angry with your wife, don't beat them. Okay? If you are angry with your husband, don't beat your child. That is misdirected anger. So one of the one of the one category of parents, fathers, not good, is passive fathers. Don't be a passive father. We'll visit this topic later. So I'll stop right there. But as we do this, just thank God for God's love that He showed us. Amen. Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And Papi glide in the fall. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you close your eyes for a moment of prayer?